Hi everyone! Today we're washing fresh frozen flour using the Mescaltura light. If you're curious about the process, keep watching. We recently did a demo where we washed about 45 pounds of fresh frozen flour. Keep in mind this was a demo, so the lab wasn't fully equipped and most of the staff involved had never used the Mescaltura system. To be honest, this demo was a disaster. Everything that could go wrong did, in spite of our best efforts to prepare for the event. I personally dropped the ball on so many things, as I lost focus on the process as I resolved one issue after the other. In the end, I decided to post this video because, well, shit happens. We're real people dealing with real world problems. If you prefer highly staged and edited content, maybe this isn't for you. Anyways, let's dive in. First of all, cleanliness is key to making great hash. Focus on dialing down your procedure to keep your workspace and your equipment clean before you even begin to make hash. The first thing you'll note in this scene is that the biomass isn't agitating. If you saw the loading video published recently, you know the many things we did wrong when loading the tank. I suggest you watch that video. The cool thing about the Mescalatory Light is that you can change the fluid dynamics of the system by making micro adjustments on the pulsator height. In the end, a small height change got things moving. Once bricks of fresh frozen biomass broke up and ice clumps melted, normal fluid dynamics were established. The power requirements for a mass to agitate when the percentage of solids is high is, well, increased. This also applies to the particle size. The bigger the particle, the more required to move it. In this scene, this is shown as a pulsator speed. You can see the notches on the shaft, how quickly they're spinning. The faster the agitator moves, the higher the shear, which is what grinds up your biomass and creates contaminants. There's a sweet spot to the percentage of solids the tank can handle, and that will depend on the particle itself. For example, you can load the tank with more trim than flour because trim particles are smaller than flour. The biomass and the end product will dictate the sweet spot. Remember, great equipment helps to make great hash, but equipment isn't everything. Procedure and quality flour is just as important. Note the material buildup on the corners. Agitator speed was used to improve fluid dynamics to prevent this. This was necessary but detrimental. The correct action was to remove some biomass or change agitator position. This was exacerbated by poor bag installation. We should have adjusted the bag to alleviate this issue. We could have drained some water, but doing so would increase percentage of solids and created new challenges. Our agitator is designed for an optimal speed of 250 RPM. Above this, the shear is high and detrimental to trichomes. Check out a previous video where we examine other agitator types and compare them to our design. Note that even hand paddles create shear. Claiming your agitator does not create shear is just expressing how little you know about engineering. Even though we soaked for 30 minutes, it's clear the soak time was not enough. I got sidetracked and didn't check if the flour had fully defrosted and was supple. The entire supply chain is part of uh, creating good hash. This is why the term fire in, fire out is true. You can easily ruin great flour after harvesting by the way you handle and store it before processing. To some it may be obvious how the biomass is being torn up at this stage, the result of poor technique. You can see how quickly foam forms, the direct result of flour damage. What could we have done different up to this point? Number one, not rush the process and started when we were ready, or not even at all, even though we had guests waiting for hours to see the wash. Number two, loaded the tank lighter, as this was high quality flour. Number three, break up or remove bricks of ice that had not melted. Number four, break up blocks of flour. Number five, soak longer, ensuring the soak was complete. We could have even removed part of the biomass from the tank after the fact, left soaking, and processed as a, a second batch. If this was hemp, or if the aim was to achieve a food grade product, this would be a fine SOP as we're guaranteed a high yield. In total, we agitated for 60 minutes, changed water, and agitated to rinse a second time for 15 minutes.
As you agitate, the slurry becomes less viscous as all sorts of waxes and glycerols are extracted from the biomass. If you're using bags to filter, this causes challenges we described in a previous video. If you have a sieve, it alleviates this issue, making water changes a preference, not a necessity.
Changing the water eliminates contaminants and removes trichomes from the system. In this scene, water has been changed. As bricks of flour and ice have broken up, less energy is required to move the now smaller particles. Notice how fluid the slurry is. This is closer to optimal. Keep in mind this is the same biomass, yet it flows freely and smoothly. It's important to understand how viscosity affects the process. What changes cause this huge difference in fluidity? Let's see if you're paying attention. Leave your comments below. At the end of your drain cycle, have a sprayer handy to wash flour off the mesh bag walls. This will make cleanup easier. When cleaning the impeller, don't raise it as high as I did. It'll be easier to rinse it off and avoid splashing outside the tank. Did I miss anything? Let me know what you think. What would you have done differently? What tricks have you learned that might improve the process?